Boom, boom, sh, boom, 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 sh, boom. What's boom, up, everybody? You're boom, listening to the boom, Hustle and Flow Chart boom, podcast boom, boom, with your boys, Matt Wolf boom, boom, and Joe Fear. Boom, boom. Wiki, Check wiki, wiki. it. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Hustle and Flow Chart podcast. How are we doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? <laughs> it's been a good day. I'm glad you can make it, Joe. Yeah. yeah. And I'm glad you listeners are tuning in. I like how you did a phantom like you all to the corner of the room that's empty. Yeah, I'm I'm speaking to our audience. <laughs> Now listen audience. up, minions. No, I'm just kidding. Whoa, <laughs> that was Matt. You can hate him and not me. I thought that's how the dynamic went. That's true. <laughs> it's like a nice good guy, guy, bad guy podcast. And there's no <laughs> guesses on who's the good guy here. Um, it fluctuates per day or interview. <laughs> All right, so we got a we got a fun show today, and this is a uh, it's another duo show. A duo up- interviewing a duo. That's right. It's uh, We've done that often. We've done a couple of those recently. Mm-hmm. Um, this one is with Justin and Lee from the old podcast. That's the Optimal Living Daily Podcast. And they also have some other shows. Uh, you can check them out at oldpodcast.com. I think they have a total of five. They have five, five, I think five or seven shows. shows. Either way, they are doing things right. Yeah, so across their shows, they've got... I mean, they got a couple downloads. Um, Are you sure it's just a couple? 77 million? Yeah, it's a couple. Yeah, so they've got a few <laughs> downloads of their podcasts. And the what, what blew us away about what they're doing is their style of podcast. And I don't want to give too much away because it's pretty brilliant. But um, it's uh, they're basically creating a podcast around content that they didn't create. It's curated content. Yeah, and so they've got a very specific model and method for doing that. And when we heard it for the first time, we just went, man, this... Uh, this is awesome. We got to get you on the show to talk about it. And they were kind of hesitant. We've probably talked to them the, for the first time, maybe like a year ago. Yeah. And we've met up with them a couple times to- or once in person and a couple times online, like mastermind style. Yeah. And so we finally got them to agree to get on the show. And I think even at one point, Justin mentioned, I have no idea how you guys got me because <laughs> I never do podcasts. I don't think, it, I don't think either <laughs> of them have ever been on a show. So, but uh, Justin actually is a, uh, a longtime listener. All the way back to your days of Multiply Authority before I just mm-hmm. dragged, you know, showed up. Before you under, dragged the show down. When you, exactly. <laughs> just showed up at your dorm like, give me a microphone. <laughs> uh, but Justin, props to you. I know you're listening to this. Or I don't know if you listen, like to listen to your own voice, but hopefully you'll listen to your own episode. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for listening for so long. Uh, these guys, like Justin and Lee, are amazing. They have a small team. They're doing a lot, and they have a daily show, too. Mm-hmm. The Optimum Living Daily is a, a daily show, of course, and the other ones are a lot per week. I believe they're five times a week. But these guys were in the app space to start things off. You know, They did a lot of app-type businesses. Matt and I also did that. Um, the common theme is they pretty much leveraged platforms and leveraged other content or frameworks, things like that, to really put their own spin on things. Yeah, and I think that's the big takeaway: is like they're not really starting from scratch, and they're now doing this in the podcast space. Yeah, so it's really unique. It's definitely a gap in the market, and they're just freaking running with it. And also, uh, Justin was a regular guest on the Craig Ferguson ah, show. Ah, you gave away the name. No. Oh. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, I was going to leave it ambiguous. Oh, the but. late night show. So he used to be a pretty recurring guest, and we'll talk about that. And uh, it's a fun little discussion. Ten times on ten the show. Times. And he actually got paid for it. So he uh, he actually explains how that all came out to... Like how he basically became BFFs of Craig Ferguson. (laughs) It's crazy. And there's actually a pretty cool YouTube compilation video. I think we're going to put it in the show notes. Yeah. I Uh, feel like this intro is getting really long. So let's let's talk Uh, about our sponsor real quick. And then... uh, God, you make it such an abrupt thing. I I need to... No, we just need to move on. Okay. (laughs) Okay, time Nazi. Hey, Uh, good guy, bad guy. (laughs) Who's going to lay down the law? Oh, Okay. (laughs) Go ahead. Talk ah, about our sponsor. Just killing time. <laughs> All right. So, actually, one way that you can use a our sponsor, as you call them, uh, Gen M. So they have highly trained marketing focused apprentices slash interns, whatever you want to call that uh, them. But essentially, one way you can use interns or apprentices is to create curated types of content. Mm-hmm. If you think about it, so. 
the way we're using uh, these these Gin M, and this is uh, we have a discount code, so don't just go there quite yet. Uh, but essentially, you can use them for all sorts of different tasks in your business. Things that are repetitive are great, but marketing related type tasks are the best because they actually are trained but not specialized in what you do. So what's really cool and unique about this is that it's literally $50 a month mm -hmm. to get an apprentice who is trained and very eager to work for up to 40 hours per week. Per month. Per month. <laughs> That's right. Not per week. Per month. Uh, but $50 for f a month for 40 hours a month. It's crazy. So it's a three-month commitment that you have with each one of these apprentices. It's up to you to support them. But you have this opportunity at Gin M. It's actually a little special discount. We can knock some off the price if you actually go to evergreenprofits.com slash Gin M. It's what we use. I think we have four apprentices now. And just to clarify, it's Gen G-E-N-M. So evergreenprofits.com slash Gen M with a G. Correcto mundo. So... Just think about all the things in your business that are kind of repetitive or you feel like you just shouldn't be in there. Maybe it's great for someone who, with enough knowledge to just do the work for you and you're willing to actually put the effort in there to support them as well or your team has the time to do that. That's how we do it. Uh, then this is a no-brainer for any business owner, even if you're starting out brand new. Definitely. So go to evergreenprofits.com slash GNM, G-E-N-M. That'll get you 10 bucks off. And uh, go get yourself an intern uh, doing shit in your business for you. Virtual intern. Virtual Mind intern. You don't even have to come to your office, which is great, or your house like we have. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and jump in with Justin and Lee from the old podcast and uh, hear about their killer strategies for getting 77 million downloads on their podcast. Hashtag pod fizzle. Hey guys, we're live. How you guys doing? Great. How about you? Good, dude. Good. <laughs> yes, just doing awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. This this interview is going to be freaking great. Yeah. Uh, it's not an interview, damn it. <laughs> you know just saying, this no, discussion not... is going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are just awesome. Okay, remind me how... I know, did you guys reach out to us or was it the other way around originally? yeah that was me actually i've been listening to your guys' show since oh i'm justin by the way so if we hey. need to clear up who's who <laughs> um i've been listening to your show since it was the authority insider is that right matt yeah 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 so i was listening to that pretty early on i think and then i'm like who's this joe guy he just showed up <laughs> randomly but uh, <laughs> i know it did kind of pop in <laughs> yeah and then uh i think i just reached out and you're like i finally joined a facebook group after a couple of call to actions from you guys and and then like something came up where you're asking for hey like we just want to talk to a couple of you guys and i instant messaged and it started from there yeah so, it's been super rad because we met uh well uh lee you're out there in what michigan upper michigan, michigan? Yep. yeah we'll just call it tundra land <laughs> <laughs> so practically canada Pretty much. Oh. No. <laughs> He's Pretty much. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, you were out in Southern California. So Matt and I hopped on a train, which was an adventure in itself from San Diego <laughs> to Irvine to meet up with you guys and basically just drink and talk podcasts. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. It was just like random. We were like, I have no clue what these guys even look like. And <laughs> their podcasts are great. But I was just like... It was, it was, but it was an awesome time. Like the fact of the matter, it just felt like we we're just, you know, it was, we have like a similar dynamic, which yeah. I think was funny. You guys are partners, Matt and I, and we have like that same kind of, I don't know, thing going on when, when you're talking to a, to a bunch of people. For sure. That's like kind of what drew me to your guys' podcast even more was that it sounds like Matt's a lot like me and Joe's a lot, or uh, Lee's a lot like Joe. So it's it, that dynamic it seems like it works really well with businesses where there's like more an introvert analytical type guy and then a more extrovert salesy type or guy who fronts it and talks a lot to everybody. So, right. and and we just did our Colby test. I don't, I don't remember the scores off the top of our head, but it sounded very similar to your guys is from what, from what we talked about. Yeah. Are you guys going down the route and getting your own assistant or a manager? Yeah. Yeah. We had a interview yesterday like the first person went really well. So nice. I, I think we're planning on uh, sending an offer her way. So again, it sounds very similar to, to the setup you guys went through where it was like the first person seems like kind of a home run. So yeah. Um, yeah. And actually having, having spoken with your ops manager, mm -hmm. uh, kind of got a similar feel <laughs> for the lady we interviewed yesterday. 
as uh, as we felt talking to your ops manager. So it's it's just really funny the parallels there. Justin and I were just talking about that yesterday. <laughs> That's yeah. perfect. So if anybody's listening in and they're totally confused about this conversation, we do have an episode with uh, Tim Francis, who has a company called Great Assistant. And uh, they're essentially a headhunter that'll go out and help you find a, a VA or, a, a, in our case, an operations manager. Headhunter sounds so yeah. <laughs> like I'm like, a headhunter. I put them on states. They're like but Boba I pick the right ones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Let's let's. Uh, um, so, Lee, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you guys sort of got into business together, and you know how you guys got partnered up? And we'll get into your actual business model in a minute because it's super fascinating. But how did you guys get connected and start working together? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so Justin and I went to grad school together at Pepperdine. Got our MBAs. Uh, in Malibu. Um, so we met there, uh, had a few classes together, became friends. Um, and that was kind of it. We never had never started any business, you know, talked businesses a little bit. We both kind of knew we were into entrepreneurship, but, but, you know, with all the free time we had in grad school, we, (laughs) we wasted it away instead of, uh, (laughs) working on something like a business. And, uh, so about a year after graduation, I was living in Chicago and Justin was still in Los Angeles. And I just shot him a text to see, you know, how things were going. And he was already ready to be done with kind of the corporate world and Mm -hmm. uh, do something for himself. And I was feeling the exact same way. So uh, we had both kind of been independently looking at different businesses that that could be interesting to us. And we both kind of settled on mobile apps. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think we'd both maybe read the same Tim Ferriss article interview uh, <laughs> about somebody who's really successful building a mobile app portfolio. Uh, and we kind of got started. And I think from that original text message conversation to, you know, kind of being up and running as a company it was probably less than six months. So we really jumped in, got after it right away, decided what we wanted to do, uh, raised money, and then proceeded to lose about 95% of that money. Oh, wow. oh um, man. I think I know the exact article you were talking about on Tim Ferriss's blog. Was it one by uh, Chad Moretta? Chad, yes. Was, yes, yes. Is. Uh, I know Chad. Yeah. yeah, he's a cool dude. Yeah, I remember that article. And, and I actually, it's funny because when you were mentioning that, I looked up at my bookshelf because I've got about six books about how to do app development. App yeah. Empire, which and, is. Uh, and one of them is App Empire, which is by Chad Moretta. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it yep. just got me thinking about how I, I explored the app path for like two months and gave up on it. We all did, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that, that sounds better than our path. <laughs> was, uh, oh, I invested like, quite a bit of money into getting something developed that I never yeah. released and never made a penny. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we we spent a ton of money, built this app, which we thought was going to be the next Instagram, you know, so we're like, ah, we don't need to monetize it. We'll just get a ton of users and then sell it for a billion (laughs) dollars. And uh, we did a decent job on user growth, but not on user retention. And then obviously not on retention and just um, the cost of maintaining that app because we have profiles and all that kind of stuff just became so much and we were burning through the cash we had raised so quickly that Justin was like, and Justin had left his job to do this full time for us. And I was still working. Oh, um, wow. And so we were down to maybe like a month's worth of money left. And Justin was, you know, looking at the prospect of having to go back into corporate America and he just couldn't do it. So, uh, he started, uh, teaching himself how to code like simple apps. Um, there you go. And then Saves some money. Yeah, we saved money. They were very, very low quality apps, but he was able to publish one almost one a day at the beginning. Um, and they got faster and faster. And we were just publishing like, hey, what were we doing at our peak, Justin? Was it like three or four a day? It was. And and that was thanks to actually that group of people like App Empire. And then that led to Carter Thomas of uh, Blue... Blue cloud. Uh, blue cloud. Blue there cloud. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. And so he was all into app reskinning, which is basically taking like templates of these apps, which I know you guys have a history with for for web or yep. online. And it's the exact same thing, except you do this for apps. So you take like a terrible code, usually like a slot machine, something really simple <laughs> that people will play over and over again. And you just simply change out the graphics and make it like a Halloween casino, which is exactly what we did. That was one of our very first ones. Was a Halloween slot machine, and that did. A couple thousand dollars off of like a hundred dollar source code, mm-hmm. and we're like, okay, we got something now. So we we turned that to Christmas <laughs> Casino. We turned that into <laughs> Valentine's <laughs> Casino, going all the way around the year, and that like took us from the couple thousand dollars we had left in the bank, and I think I was paying myself maybe two grand a month just to keep 
just so I didn't have to go back to work. Dang. And that reversed all of it. And and we became profitable after that. But just to let your your listeners know, it's that does not work anymore. You can't no, do that. I, I remember those days and and I was working with a guy, Amish Shah, who uh, was big in the app space. He's buddy that's how I met Chad Moretta back in the day and I remember these times because I was doing the same thing. I think he was as well, Amish and Chad Prop, but like these reskinning things, mm-hmm. like it was like no, it was just a wild, wild west on Apple iTunes back in the day and Google Play Store. Yeah, in fact, yeah. one of our our first consultant was it. It was, was Quack. It wasn't our first consulting client, but it was one of our first consulting clients. Was a guy named Quack Bui, who um, he had a what was his course called before we took it over. I forget, but it was essentially teaching a similar yeah. type of thing. Just, yeah. He essentially had an online course called like how to make iPhone apps or something. It was just a very generic name for a course. Um, and we actually took it over, um, partnered with Quok on it and called it the rebranded it the app shortcut and sold that with him for a couple of years. So we were actually teaching people how to make apps, but we weren't actually making apps ourselves during that process. But we had an expert. Oh, we had, yeah. But Quok but the, was our expert in that one. The whole thing is it doesn't work <laughs> <Right>? anymore. <laughs> yeah, so why, why doesn't it work anymore out of curiosity? Uh, so Apple, just like they are starting to do with podcasts, they're shutting down like any kind of spamminess. So mm-hmm. if you have like a, a source code that you release over and over again, and it's they know like we've seen they've they've had so many probably hundreds of thousands of slot machines at this point. <laughs> they're like this is not adding value to the ecosystem, so they're simply just not approving it flat out like right yeah. in the beginning. Um, and that's like we started to realize that a little bit after we started teaching it. So same, same thing as you guys, like we went down the course route and, and used Udemy and, and all this stuff. Um, and we're selling source codes ourselves and we realized, okay, there's actually more money here. Cause now, you know, we took a, it's like a bingo source code that we built from scratch now. So we're going back to like developing from scratch, like all the way from the beginning, mm-hmm. uh, paid maybe five, five grand, I'd say four to five grand. And then said, hey, let's sell this source code to people just like these other guys do, like Carter Thomas, and we'll do it for 500 bucks. So all we need to do is sell like 10 of these hmm. to break even. And we yeah. sold like, I don't know, probably 50, I don't know, something something around the, uh, around those lines. So nice. it, it was like the teaching of it became way more lucrative. And it was actually more interesting for me because like doing that grind of publishing every single day was, is, uh, yeah, that's, that's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> for sure now i remember those days and i was doing that with ibooks as well publishing and so similar thing happened obviously uh, itunes cracks down on certain things and yep. but it's good they're doing it on podcasts i made, um, I mean, with, I made really two apps them. ever well, well they were both games one was an app uh i don't remember, know if you ever guys if you guys remember the game fall down forever on the ti-83 calculator <laughs> <laughs> it was like the little ball and it would like drop and you'd had to move it before the, like the ball got oh, yeah. to the bo- the top of the screen and got squished to the top of the screen <laughs> i basically recreated that game and i called it paintball drop so it was like a paintball and then like <laughs> if it got to the top of the screen it made like a giant splatter all over your screen dude that app's gonna blow up now that you missed it. <laughs> yeah. you actually it's, it. it, it's not in the app store anymore because i stopped yeah. paying the like 99 dollars a year or whatever uh, it is to yep. keep yeah, it yeah. in the app store not but um, i made that game i i probably spent thousands of dollars having it developed and because i developed that from scratch it wasn't a, a source code and then right. I think I put like ad mob and you know, all the various little ad platforms on it. And I think it made like 30 bucks ever. And I'm like, screw this. <laughs> and then I created a second app that was like a motorcycle game. Um, what was that car game that we used to play where you'd like do the flips in the car and uh, uh, side bike. No, well, yeah. that's all that I made was very similar to excite bike, but it was like excite bike crossed with this popular yeah. iPhone game, like extreme road trip or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you guys have seen it. I, I can't mm-hmm. think of it. Anyway, now. that app I actually had developed and I just never even put it out there. Never even tried. I just, I kind Ugh. of decided not to go down that route, but that was actually a reskinned app. So anyway, yeah. Uh, total side tangent. Yeah. yeah long we got to a point where it was a little more like we got to actually what I would call, cause we were the Walmart of apps in the beginning. It was terrible. <laughs> it was the worst quality. And then we got to a point where it actually was decent. It was like, I, I coded like a choose your own adventure storybook app. So it's it's got like cartoon characters and, and it was based off like the Bachelor series. <laughs> and they basically, you could kind of like pick who you want to date. And it was, that was actually interesting because you're picking options and going down a different story route. So that was <laughs> cool, but it's still like the, the grind of it and just over and over getting a writer to write this. And by the time we're releasing the app and sometimes it's rejected for various reasons, they're getting more strict. It's like, it, it's not worth it. Yeah. So, yeah. Hmm. 
All right. Well, it, hey, it got you into podcast. All right. Well, so <laughs> what was the transition? Was it like you guys were understanding what the platform was like, you know, iTunes and all that stuff? Like, yeah. What, yeah. It was almost kind of random. Um, <laughs> I got interviewed uh, by Steve P. Young. I don't know if you guys are familiar with him. No. Um, but he's big in the app world. So I got interviewed on his podcast and um, to talk about our mobile app business. And I was like, oh, podcast, this is interesting. I'd heard of it, but I never really had spent any time in like the podcast app on my iPhone. So I hopped in there to listen to a few of his episodes um, just to prepare myself. And I'm like, oh, this is really cool. What else can I find? So I'm in there. So all of a sudden, you know, I'm working my corporate job, but it was kind of a job where there's a few hours a day where I could kind of go on autopilot and, and type away and listen to something in the background. So I started doing that with podcasts. And I think I was probably always saying like, Hey, Justin, this podcast is cool. Or this podcast is cool. <laughs> um, and Justin and I were ready to transition out of apps. Um, we want to do something that was more of a passion project. We were both really into personal development. So we had talked about, um, you know, starting a blog or becoming experts in a certain area, a certain niche of like personal development. Um, and we just realized like it takes, it, it's so hard to become like that expert in a certain niche like that, especially when there's so many great writers and bloggers and authors out there. So Justin one day was like, hey, what do you think if I just narrate blogs, we'll get author permission or blogger permission, and I'll just narrate blogs that are in the personal development field. So we'll touch minimalism, we'll touch productivity, uh, finance, health, business, all these things. And I was like, it sounds like a cool idea. Like I, I would listen to it. I like listening to the podcast. I would definitely listen to it. Let's try it. And uh, that was kind of the beginning of it right there. And then Crazy. from there, it really snowballed. Yeah. So just to kind of like re-explain the concept a little bit, it's, it's essentially you go and find blog posts um, online that you really, really like, uh, and then you essentially read them. And they're very high, highly polished. They sound like audiobooks. It doesn't just sound like somebody just kind of grabbed their iPhone and read a book to you or something. It, it's very highly polished episodes. And, uh, and, and that's the podcast. And, 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 and so today, fast forward, how popular is the podcast? Like what, what kind of listenership do you have across all your episodes and all your shows? So to date across all five of our narration shows, um, which started December of 2015 with the first show, uh, we're over 70 million total downloads. Jeez. Seven, zero, <laughs> and then million. <laughs> yeah, that's, crazy. Uh, that's, that's so crazy. Yeah, it's blown away any expectations we've ever had. Every time we hit a new number, uh, Justin will set a goal for what the next number should be, and then we'll end up hitting it in about half the time of what he was, was so hoping. So what you're we, saying is Justin just doesn't think big enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually what, seriously, what I launched... Uh, optimal living daily the first one in december i was like okay by the end of next year so of 2016 i wanted to have a thousand downloads in one day and we hit that before the year even started it was still december <laughs> like right after launch we hit a thousand downloads in a day wow. and i was like oh weird <laughs> like that's that's not what, what we expected oh, wow. so we, hit that, we set that to ten thousand in a day i think we hit that at the six month mark so it's kind of it was just kind of nuts how it all spiraled yeah. um well, and we did get a little lucky in that i love the concept too and i think that's what we were so attracted by when when we first started talking was wow this is such a, a unique interesting concept and it doesn't seem like there's other people out there doing it it seems like you guys kind of are i mean you, you you'd probably know better than we do if there's other people out there doing the same kind of concept but i haven't run across it i haven't and, either no um i think we were telling you last time the the four of us had a call we were out in Austin and we, we were getting Joe's Tesla and we got in the car and we turned to the tune in app and on the screen, right when we turned over to the tune in app was the big old OLD podcast logo. It was like featured inside his Tesla when we sat down in the car and I took a picture of it and I swore I texted you the picture, but it must not have gone through. Yeah. Cause I was like, Matt, you got to take a picture of this shit. This is great. But it's like, that was like the first thing that showed up when we turned onto the tune in app was recommended podcasts and it had the OLD podcast. And we're like, man, That's this is insane. Cool. Yeah. Which is crazy. Cause I, I have no idea that that was a thing and we're not paying for that, like that kind of advertisement or anything. So it's just a uh, love it. Yeah. Organic type of thing. 
Well, so, yeah, well, and that's the thing. I think there's so many, well, I know there's so many pl- podcast platforms. Tune in is the one that I know Tesla has, at least in my car. Yeah. <laughs> but there's so many. I think we've tried to even get on that, mm. but we... We're on the Tune In app. If you go to the Tune In website, you can find our podcast. But if you try to search for it, like in the te- the app on the Tesla, we don't show up. It's like the Tesla app. I'll sort have to of, try it. I haven't tried it in like a week or two. Yeah, the, the Tesla app seems like it kind of like picks and chooses the cream of the crop to to put inside of their platform. I'm right, might be really- curating it. Yeah, the top like the maybe the top charts of their own uh, ecosystem somehow. No, yeah. are there are there yeah. other just real quick? Are there are there other people that you've seen kind of doing this same concept? We actually, so a guy after we did our first one. So no, not to answer your question quickly. No, there was nobody that we knew of that was doing it when we came up with the idea and started doing it. Are you guys familiar with uh, gaps.com? Yeah, that's um, the Viper Chill guy, uh, Glenn yes. Alsop, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like maybe about a year later, he wrote a post and it was like, uh, because he just likes to show ideas that are working uh, in, in different industries and say like, hey, guys, this is a cool idea. It's a gap in the marketplace. Mm-hmm. Try this. So he just gives ideas to people. That's like the basis of the website. And um, he featured us and he was like, Dude, these guys are just narrating stuff. Mm-hmm. You guys should be doing this, and I'm going to start it. I'm going to do it myself, and I'll, and that's also part of the the website. Is like he'll start the business for you, and then hand it off to somebody. Cool idea. It's like yeah. I'll I'll get this running. You just need to be dedicated and prove to me why you want it, and I'll give it to one person. So he gave the podcast this. He started narrating, or or he had someone do it because he didn't want his voice on it, and uh, he launched it. He had a website. He had the podcast going. And then handed it off to somebody, and that guy continued for maybe a year. Got permission. It was most mostly through Medium articles, and mm-hmm. that guy was doing maybe one a week, and slowly, slowly, just kind of gave up on it. And now I haven't seen a new episode in probably six months. Yeah. Pod fizzle. I'm gonna pod. brand that as a new one. That's a pod fizzle. It's pod like, fading. <laughs> that's what they call it. No, <laughs> I'm saying <I> fizzle. <laughs> but Joe, Joe knows very well that it's called pod fade. He's just trying to get his own brand in there. Hashtag pod fizzle. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that's. I, I'm just. I'm. I'm thinking about the concept, and it almost like plays off of what you did in the app game. You know, you're you're essentially leveraging something that's already created. You're not creating something brand new. You're just reskinning it. But you're obviously presenting it in a way and on a platform where it doesn't live currently. So it's a really right. cool thing you guys are doing that it seems like it's still a gap in the market, even though this guy pod fizzled away. Yeah. You know, <laughs> see, I'm using it. Yeah. Now. We've we've hit so many niches now. We have five different narration shows covering all these different topics. So it, it's it, it'd be hard to start now. And and podcasting is is a it's pretty flooded right now. Mm-hmm. So it'd be, it'd be hard to start now, but also like with the apps and with this, it sounds like easy. You're like, Oh, that that's so obvious, you know, just all we have to do is read an article. Uh, but it, it's a massive grind. It takes many, many hours to do it. There's no mistakes when we, when we narrate, they're all taken out. The editing is insane. It's, mm. it's the, the grind of it is like, uh, you have to be super persistent. And I was full time when I was doing it. That was the only way I could have done it. It's a daily show. So that's, I can see why the other guy did it weekly and why that <laughs> oh, was yeah. even difficult. Like towards the end, he's like, all right, guys, I'm gonna experiment with something. I'm just going to leave the mistakes in. And I was like, Ooh, no, oh, you know, no. <laughs> you know, and I understand it though. It's like, it's so hard to read it, not make mistakes or, take the mistakes out after the fact either way it's it's tough so yeah and, and you guys really go for that high quality polished like audiobook sound with yours and i can see right. people and, jumping uh, in going yep. oh this looks easy let's uh let's just go ahead and you know put on my iphone headphones and record it into the sound recorder <laughs> app and <laughs> throw it online and see if it gains traction good luck but i think the <laughs> fact that you you guys are trying to make it sound like an audiobook and you're going for that polished thing i think that's a, another thing that really sets you apart. Um, so yeah. what I wanted to ask was what, what does the process look like? You know, uh, I'm, I'm assuming you're not recording something new every single day. Uh, uh, maybe you're batching, maybe you've got some other team members that are kind of doing a lot of the, the heavy lifting for you. What is, what does the process look like to get new episodes out? Yep. So I, I, when I'm doing my show, I batch usually four episodes at a time for in sometimes five i'm feeling nuts my brother will do so he's optimal health daily so Mm -hmm. he reads like nerd fitness and and stuff like that and he uh does five so once a week and his is five uh episodes a week so that makes sense he'll just come in do all five we script every single word out 
Mm -hmm. Um, so it's all there. And when you make a mistake, we have a dog clicker, you put it right up to the mic. And what that does is it creates a spike in the visual audio. Like once it's in the program, once it's in audacity or whatever you use. That's, smart. That's freaking brilliant. Yeah. I always so, clap in front of our mic and we look, yeah. like, we look ridiculous when we do it. The dog clicker is brilliant. <laughs> I'm just thinking, I'm like, what the hell is a dog click? Oh, that's a dog clicker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it makes a clicking sound. That's funny though. Cause the clapping, like I did that for a while. And, and also my girlfriend, like we don't have a dog clicker here. So, and she's doing a separate podcast idea. Yeah, and she was doing intros. So I'm like, oh, just clap into the mic. I'm in a different room and I just hear it. And it sounds like she's like slapping herself after every mistake. I'm like, this is terrible. <laughs> so, but like the dog clicker, it's, it's, it's a really unique, like the spike is perfect. It's like, uh, it goes all the way to the top. It's really thin, but like, so you can see it perfectly. And it claps, you know, you have to like, it's each one's inconsistent. So this yeah. is very clear. And uh, yeah, it's a good way to mark. Uh, to make marks in your audio. That's so we, you basically just take that marker and you just move it and say, okay, find the, where I started that sentence and you're replacing. Um, we did eventually get somebody else to do that part for us to just take out the mistakes using those, like finding mm-hmm. those clicks. So that, that helps a lot on the editing side. I love that idea. Love it. Yeah. So, so basically you, d- you do the recording or your girlfriend or your brother or whoever else. And then essentially you have an editor uh, that mm-hmm. kind of takes care of it from there. Yeah, and I, I have the perfectionist tendencies, so I, I do a final um, run through of it. And usually at that point, it's pretty good, but I'll still spend 20 minutes per episode mm-hmm. just um, bleeping out. We're, we're, we're all clean, and, and that's another thing with the App Store. If you have any bad words in there or you mark one episode out of your entire list of episodes, just one of them is explicit you're banned from countries like India and, and some other ones. So we, we kept everything clean for, for a reason. So I got to bleep out the words. Um, didn't want someone outside of the country doing that because they mm. might miss something. Well, I and guess, then, uh, I guess our show's fucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually, I actually went back in after you, we talked to you guys cause ours, we never set anything and it said clean lyrics inside of iTunes. Cause I just never said it. And I went and actually changed it to explicit because I'm like, yeah, I don't want to mess with that. I don't want to get like shadow banned or something. I don't know what they do. But I just I I set it to explicit because I know we cuss a lot. And I figure most like if you're in India or something like that, I'm assuming you're probably not going to listen on iTunes if they're going to censor it that much. So they're probably listening from Overcast or our show notes page or something. Anyway, find us at our website. You hear everything you want. Yep. You have to be careful too. Um, Overcast pulls from iTunes. So this is what's kind of... um, the, a lot of podcast apps, why Apple like owns everything in podcasting is that a lot of podcast apps just use Apple's API and they take the, all their information, the charts, the podcast from Apple. So they're not, you, you don't submit to them. The only ones that you submit to them are like Stitcher and TuneIn, I think, these days. Hmm. And um, maybe now Google Podcasts. But everything else is pulling from Apple. So it's got to like, if you're not in Apple, they're not going to know. Um, yeah. but Spotify is another one you got to submit to, too. Spotify. Yes, um, yes. Well, that's yeah. kind of crazy because, I mean, I'm sure you guys are aware, but if the listeners aren't, like iTunes is being like hardcore gamed the rankings mm. right now. Like there's all these mm-hmm. videos of people, mm-hmm. like how people are doing it. And it's got to be short lived because there's people with like, what, like 10 reviews popping up to like the top of the charts. So you're just like, uh, what? well, yeah, and you go and look at the reviews and they're like, this show's great. I love it. <laughs> Thanks for posting this. Like, that's what the reviews look like. You could tell they went on Fiverr or something and then hired somebody and just, they just posted random crap to get reviews. But yeah, we know now that reviews don't even have that big of an impact on your rankings. So well, it's kind you, of a waste. How do you, how do you guys see it shaping up? Like, is it going to be a cleanup? Are they going to leave it? Or what's the future of this stuff? Looking I think like? they've already started cleaning up quite a bit. Um, I know for our show, you know, we're ranked in the in the health charts. Mm-hmm. And at, at some point, you know, we used to always be in the top 10 to 15. And then all of a sudden, we we're in like the 40s and 50s. And I'm going through just like you guys are saying. And over half of the podcasts that are ranked ahead of us have fewer than like 30 reviews. Mm-hmm. Um and they're all by the same company or two. Right? Yeah. So it's, it's kind of a red flag. Yeah, uh, yeah. M- most of those, at least in the healthcare de- category, are now gone. They're, they're totally scrubbed from that. Oh, so good, good. They're, okay. still, they're still searchable. So there's, the shows, shows are still out there. Um, but it does look like Apple's either starting to clean those up or the people that were paying for those, you know, click subscribes to climb the charts um, are no longer doing it because they might have not been been seeing any actual organic growth from being ranked that high. So, yeah, yeah I Good. just don't know if there's going to be an ROI there for people. 
to, to continue to do that. So whether Apple has to clean it up or not, I guess we'll see. Um, but it doesn't look like those shows are really gaining much traction, even though they're getting such top placement in the charts. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah, because no. I just think of it like iTunes is almost like the center hub of like the podcasting world yeah. right now, at least. I uh, think that'll yeah. change over time. Um, we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. We'll yeah, see. it's it's <laughs> app or um, on most people's podcasts, like Apple makes up sixty percent of downloads. But then if you include like Overcast, who's pulling from it, that's another. 20 percent like they're they're like 80 percent of yeah. really like if you think of it that way they're mostly the downloads and then you have google podcast coming in who's claiming they're going to double listenership so it'll be interesting to see that fight out we actually if you go into libsyn on ours overcast is our number one but that's because we actually paid for overcast ads for a long long uh, long long time mm-hmm. so we have a lot of subscribers in overcast so it actually yep. tops itunes for us but I think we're rare just because we paid for that advertising. It's definitely for rare. Sure. I think. Yep. But uh, so I have a question about the the process. How do you how do you pick which blogs you're going to curate? And do you have just like a handful of like five or six blogs that you're constantly reading from, or are you pretty much scouring the internet looking for anything you can find? Um, I'll take that one. I since I started full time in in March, well maybe like February of this year, I've taken over kind of the content curation. Um, because Justin had a lot on his plate for a long time. Um, so right now, I think we have, if we don't have 100 authors, we're pretty close. So 100 authors are websites that we narrate from. Um, we're On average, we're adding maybe 10 new ones a month right now. Um, and I have a list of probably 150 that are on kind of my review process. So um, they've either been submitted by a listener, uh, self-submitted by the actual author or blogger, um, or a referral from an existing author or blogger that we narrate. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, the content list is ever growing. I mean, it's, it's nonstop. <laughs> so from that list of like a hundred authors, uh, if you're releasing what up to five episodes a day, right? Uh, five shows that are all daily. How, how are you pick it? I might be off with those numbers too. I think some are seven days, some are five, some are different, but you know, how are you picking from these hundred plus authors um, each day on and, and deciding this is the one that, that should go. Sure. So we try to space them out um, just because we like to have different viewpoints, um, you know, from different authors. So it, on average right now uh, for each of our shows, so it's 27 episodes a week. So Justin's show optimal living daily is seven days a week and the other four or five days a week. Got it. Um, we try to space on each show about a month out. So some authors are narrated on multiple shows because they have content that fits into health and finance and personal development. So it'll be narrated. But on each individual show, we try to space them out at least a month apart. Um, so we have a spreadsheet. We track everything, obviously, on when, what episode was released, what website it came from. Um, and then we try to just kind of fill them in going down the list. And you know, we can see the last date that author was published. And if it's been over a month, then I'll, I'll go in and try to find a a new article from them and, and plug it in there. Got it. So yeah. that's actually really impressive. The fact that you've only been doing this full time now since what, March ish, February, he said. Yeah, uh, I have been, Justin's been you, going yeah. since December of 2015. So yeah, that's gnarly. So you have an editor, it sounds like, and you have other team members. Is there anybody else t- that you leverage to help do this whole process? Cause I mean, there's a lot of moving parts. It sounds like, uh, we, we, rarely get somebody from like Upwork to help with like getting the blog content. It's like I would do a one-time scrapes just so we can have mm-hmm. all the titles, which we did your site. So we're, we're planning mm-hmm. to get some of, some of your blog posts in there is brought to you by evergreenprofits.com. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> so we're, we're, we're trying to get that in. And it basically we just, it's easier to get, I mean, it's so hard to just scour and just look and then trying to find the right blog post with the right number of words to keep this at the the right length of time. So we get someone help with that. But other than that, it is just us. Nice. Yeah, that's it's impressive, man. <laughs> oh, and so, go so, for it, Matt. Yeah, so uh, what, one thing I wanted to ask was, so I know you mentioned earlier that, you know, there was a little bit of luck involved and a little bit of timing involved with when you released your podcast. But I'm curious if there was any other things you did to, to kind of, uh, to sort of jumpstart the growth. Because um, I, I, you know, we, we've talked about this off, you know, off recording before that, you know, starting a podcast two years ago was different than starting a podcast now and starting a podcast four years ago was different than two years ago. Um, so I know there, there's some timing and you even mentioned some luck involved, but uh, what other things did you do to kickstart that? 
Um, so yes, I, I do think a lot of it, a lot of it was luck because we picked the minimalism and personal development topic first, mm-hmm. and there just weren't podcasts out there talking about it yet. Mm-hmm. And um, Joshua and Ryan of the Minimalist dot com, f- they loved it, uh, the idea, and they were the first to give us permission. And they're massive, so they end up sharing it on their show. They had a podcast a couple months later, mm-hmm. and that's the sharing on other podcasts is like the most beautiful relationship because it's like they're already listening to podcasts and if it fits the the niche or the you're not advertising on like a completely different podcast but something that's along the lines of something they would listen to it's the perfect way to get them they're already in the app it's just like go to this other app and hit subscribe so they mentioned it without us even asking just because they're they're nice guys so that worked out really well in our favor they're coming out with a documentary just around the time we launched Mm -hmm. so there's all this interest in minimalism it, just that topic itself. And if you search minimalism in the apps, in the um, podcast app for Apple, we're the first results. So that's going to get you a lot of downloads automatically. So that with, with the shout outs on other shows and just people recognizing this is a unique idea and mentioning it on podcasts has been massive for us. Yeah. yeah. You know, hopefully after people listen to this, we'll get you 77 million and one downloads. Oh yeah. <laughs> Back in the power, man. Yeah, we're going to we we'll get you at least one more download as a result of this. <laughs> we'll take everyone. Guaranteed <laughs> one download. Um, so if somebody was starting a podcast today, what sort of advice do you think you'd give them on on actually growing it? Cuz I know that's probably the hardest part about podcasting. You know, we if we're doing an interview podcast, we all know people we can interview. Um, the, the tech isn't that hard once you kind of get it figured out. I think the hardest part is because there's an abundance of podcasts right now, it's just hard to get noticed. So I'm curious what advice you'd give people today trying to get going. Yeah, um, it, it's way harder today. We we launched two interview style shows recently. So this is a little bit outside of what we normally do. And because our listeners are, are not used to it, getting them to go over to that podcast was tougher. It's not, it's not the same niche necessarily. Mm -hmm. So we launched those two and without the shout outs, you don't get anything these days. There used to be new and noteworthy and all this, like Mm -hmm. you'd get bonus downloads just by being out there because nobody was doing it. Now in 2018, going to 2019, it's going to be rough because like when we do it, we, we don't see that same thing. We don't see that those bonus downloads organically. Mm -hmm. So you have to do all the work yourself nowadays. So it's going to be guesting on other podcasts. It's going to be massive. That's, that's one thing that if you you can be in that medium, so you get shout outs from other podcasters or you're guesting on their show, that's going to be probably the biggest, easiest conversion for you. Cause even getting them from a mailing list is not, I don't think as easy as if you're advertising. Yeah, Yeah. definitely tough. We, We were starting out with a mailing list when we started ours and, you know, it was, it's been, it's been a grind to try to get the people on our list to adopt podcasting or adopt listening to podcasts. Mm -hmm. Right. And so if they're not already listeners, it's, you're not hitting like an email list of podcast listeners, then you're going to, it's got to be like 15% of people. Cause like, what is it? The 15% of people even know what podcasts are now. (laughs) So it's, yeah, there's a lot of, that's the other hard part about this is like, on our website, we have to explain how to listen so clearly because so many people might land on there going, I heard this idea of this cool podcast. I have no idea how to listen to podcasts. You have there's this education piece yeah. that other mediums don't have. So it's, it is hard. It's really hard to build uh, an audience from scratch. If you don't have anything, you, mm. you have to get out there on podcasts as much as possible. That's what, that's why Matt and I are so bullish on podcasts is the fact kind of like what you just said, it obviously brings in a struggle to get people to listen to but there's such an opportunity with the channel or the medium if you stick with it and maybe you're a little creative and you knit yourself in the right place. Cause I know with us, I mean, it's just literally it's time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the fact that we've stuck with it now for what it's going to be two years fairly soon. Yeah. With this show. Yeah. Yeah. With this one. And it's, that's like really the, the previous shows, they just kind of fell off because we fell off. Yeah. <laughs> we lost momentum. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, I mean, consistency has been probably the number one factor for success. And in fact, we had Nick Loper on a few episodes ago, and he basically said the same thing. You know, mm-hmm. you ask at why his podcast is so successful. You know, he's always kind of up in the top 20 in like the business marketing category. And he said, dude, it's just, I've just been doing it for so long. I have so many episodes. When somebody goes and downloads an episode and they really like it, there's a good chance they might go download five, six, seven more episodes. 
you know, so the fact that he has such an archive and such a backlog of episodes that any new dis- person who discovers his show, the likelihood of them going and downloading more and sort of helping his ranking is, you know, higher just due to the consistency and the, the amount of episodes he has. Exactly. It's like one listener can end up being a thousand and that's where mm-hmm. we just crossed a thousand episodes on Optimal Living Daily. And if you think about all those episode titles, which are searchable in Apple Podcasts, I keep bringing up Apple Podcasts because they're the biggest. Yeah. They're, they're like 60 to 80%. So that's where you really want to get the growth. And all those episode titles themselves are searchable. You don't want to spam them because Apple will knock you down. But if you have like words in there that people are searching for, you're going to get noticed. So how do you go about your keywords and your titling and all that? Do you have a process for that? Well, that's we, we're lucky that the bloggers we pick so nick loper is one of the blogs we narrate from so he gave us permission (laughs) uh they they tend to especially on the business side they tend to optimize their titles for us are this already optimized (laughs) so we just use the blog title yeah we say the author and then there might be like a really quick description of of what that episode is but if you go past that then apple's not going to be happy right that makes sense so uh switching gears i want to talk about monetization that's fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot to it. So how do you guys monetize your guys' uh, shows? Yeah, so r- right now, it's it's 98% through advertising. So we, mm-hmm. we work with a couple different ad agencies, some independent companies, um, and, and that's the bulk of it. We do do some affiliates. You know, Whenever any of the authors that we narrate are selling a product or a course, um, we try to publish those as much as possible because... You know, not only to make some affiliate income, which is nice, but to help give back to the authors who are, you know, giving us permission to narrate their content. Mm-hmm. Um, but but that's still just such a tiny piece of the revenue pie. The bulk of it is coming from uh, advertising on the episodes. Yeah, and the advertising game—that's obviously you guys know, but uh, it's fresh to us. And I actually chatted with uh, one of your the connections you introduced us to. And it was pretty eye-opening, just the way that they... He was just explaining how it kind of all works. You know, it's all off a CPM. The the rate kind of depends more or less... Uh, really, the the niche you're in, the the frequency you're producing podcasts... CPM produce- stands for cost per thousand downloads, yeah. basically. Yeah. So it's it was eye-opening to hear all these different factors that we didn't know about because we come from, you know, direct marketing and all these other types of ways to make money where sponsorship. We're just like, we have no clue what mm. the worth of our podcast is. And uh, it was a little bit more than we actually thought that mm-hmm. we estimated. So it was, it's a different game. Um, so I guess, where do you see yourself with monetization? Are you guys going to stick with sponsorship or do you have some other plans in the works? Yeah, I, I don't see us going away from sponsorship. There's, you know, there's so much money. I think the numbers from like 2017 was like 17 billion dollars spent on radio advertising, mm-hmm. uh, and there was like 200 million spent in podcast advertising in 2017. So, uh, <laughs> podcasting is still like such a small piece of the pie. So we um, assume that over time we're going to see a lot more advertising money move over into podcasting, which is really good for us and our niches because we're very kind of strict with who we take on as a sponsor because uh, it kind of has to reflect the message of the shows. Um, So we do turn down a lot of ad sponsorship or potential ad sponsorships based on the the product that they're asking us to sell or the service. Yeah. Um, And you got to figure from like, from like a sponsor's perspective, you know, what, people used to be getting out of TV advertising and out of radio advertising there. It's kind of the same concept. It's just way more targeted, Mm -hmm. you know, like on, on radio, somebody could be, you know, you, you have no idea what demographic is listening to the, the, the the station. I mean, you may know kind of whether they're more conservatives or liberals, or if it tends to be more like Christians or whatever, like I know they have some of that demographic information, but it's still kind of fuzzy Mm -hmm. Um, with podcasts. I mean, we can drill into our data and tell you exactly who's listening to our show and the type of people that, um, that are, are tuning in each week. And that should be really, really valuable to sponsors. I mean, I I think sponsors should be willing to pay more to be on podcasts than they do on radio or TV, um, you know, over time. And another thing about the sponsorships too, is every time there's a sponsor in a show, that sponsor's in there for life. I mean, they right. somebody may discover a show that's a year old, and that sponsor's message is still in there. They're still getting yep. some some benefit from that a year later, two years later. 
So, I mean, I, I actually, Joe and I have talked about this a lot. We, we really, really love the sponsorship model and we're planning on adding that into the mix fairly soon here. Nice. Yeah. And it's only going to get better too, because the technology is getting better where Nielsen is, is partnering up with companies, uh, advertising companies to actually get the demographic data for you. So you don't have to do like surveys and pull your audience and figure it out that way. And once you get into that world where they already know who's listening to a podcast, if they have like even a general idea of age range and household income and gender, it's like, you can go so far with that because <laughs> it's just insane to me. It, it also because you can take uh, ads and place them in now and then have it change out to a different listener. So you can have an ad for something locally here in California for us and then something in Michigan for Lee. So that's Ooh, dynamic okay. advertising and that's already happening. So it's, I it's didn't know that, gonna, was, that existed yet because yes, how does that work? It does. Yeah, my, my assumption was, you know, obviously we, we upload an MP3 and iTunes and places like that are just looking at the RSS feed to grab the mp3 file so how right. how are you yep. dynamically injecting different ads into an mp3 file it's amazing though so the host it depends on your host um right now we're both on like you guys and we're on libsyn which i highly recommend it's a great company but mm -hmm. their uh, dynamic is going to be a lot more expensive if you want to try it so right now it's not lucrative but like on there's more and more platforms coming up where that's their main focus or you can use libsyn and they kind of come in and it's it's kind of forwarding that mp3 first so it's going through them first and then it's landing there it's kind of hard to explain uh, technically but hmm. it's basically through the host side of things so uh -huh. apple is just looking at your rss feed so you can they're looking at that mp3 but where it's actually hosted when they grab it when it's played it's it's kind of live in that way and that so it can change on the on the spot on the fly oh, that's going to be yeah. that's going to be pretty huge once they get that really yes. dialed in <laughs> Yes, so that's that's something Matt and I have talked about, you know, because we're we've always been big on software and all that. And we're looking at this podcast space. We're like, man, the advertising is like that space is just there's so much more to be desired. It's archaic. It's it's it very is. archaic. So this is a turn in the right direction. I love it. Now, have yeah. you guys ever thought about like uh, monetizing slots on the show this is just kind of a random idea that popped into my head but like if somebody was looking to get some exposure and their content sort of fit into the mix of your show you can always actually you know charge for slots like hey i'll read your podcast episode for x and get it in front of millions of people so so you mean like uh actually put one of their podcast episodes into our feed no no or i'm saying like it, let's say i have a blog and it's in the blog let's say it's a minimalism blog for example and I want to get some more exposure for my blog, you know, I could potentially contact you and say, Hey, I have a blog that I think would fit into your show really, really well. Can I pay you to have my, <laughs> my blog curated through your show? I would imagine people would be willing to pay through the curation because you have such a good reach. Uh, it's an interesting idea. We're it's funny because we're always we always think of our authors as gifts to us, so we would never uh, think about charging them because because like we have bigger authors and mm -hmm. they're to, to us in our mind they're just as generous as the the small guy who's like just getting started but has amazing like beautiful content. Mm -hmm. So we it's funny because some of the authors we reach out to will say the reverse of uh, only if you pay me will mm -hmm. can I give you you know will can you take this uh this blog post. So yeah, I we've never considered it just because like our authors are how we make a living. But, you know like if we didn't have yeah. that content we would have nothing. So to yeah. us it's 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 a gift. And I think the other part of that too is like, if the content's really good, like, I don't care who wrote it. <laughs> you know what I mean? If somebody has a blog with one follower, but their content is gold, I would much rather have that oh. content on the site, yeah. help get them some publicity back to their site so they can keep writing. Um, because, you know, it's, it, it's not that easy to find, you know, really well-written content uh, that's consistently written too. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. we'll find blogs and there'll be guest posts from other sites and I'll read them and I'll be like, oh, I, I really need to reach out to this person um, to read their content because this guest post was so good. And I'll go to their site and it's either 
no longer existing or they stopped writing like three years ago. And yeah. it kind of makes me sad because when you find somebody that's really a great writer and they stopped because, you know, they just couldn't build an audience. So that, that's the nice part of us like giving back. So like, but the had they been able to pay you to curate <laughs> your content, <laughs> they may have gotten a lot more traffic and their blog it's, may have never faded. It's true. It's a slippery slope though too, right? Because if we open that up and we say, okay, if you pay and you can be on the show, but their content's not up to par, then that's right. hurting. Kind yeah, of that's, that's, that's the real problem is is yeah. is introducing subpar content into Filter the process into the mix i think that'd be the bigger issue really yeah uh, because I, I mean I, I i definitely think bloggers would be willing to pay to get the exposure that you guys can offer but you know you don't want to sacrifice quality um in exchange for that maybe so. there's a happy medium there somehow <laughs> <laughs> just a random idea to monetize yeah. further no yeah and if people are interested they can they can submit their content right on our site that's we we take uh Hmm. We take self submissions all the time, so we get we get a big handful of them every week. Nice. So go ahead. I forgot what I was going to say. So uh, go ahead. <laughs> I wanted to actually mention something, and I, f- I feel like I would. Uh, I just got to throw the shout out out there. But Trevor of Advertise Cast, you guys introduced us to him. Yep. Uh, I think last week uh, it was. I think. Uh, yep. Yeah, uh, Justin, you did, and it was funny because you know we we exchanged some emails and stuff uh, through you know my Evergreen Profits email. And then it was last week, like late last week, we got in our support email. <laughs> I was looking through it and it was Trevor from Advertise Cast saying like, oh man, I just listened to the Nick Loper episode and I got a shout out. That's super cool. I've been following you guys for a really long time, listening to all your episodes. You guys, ama- you guys are amazing. I don't think he made the connection, like the name, the podcast. And then he fired me an email like an hour later. He was like... Oh man, I feel like an idiot. <laughs> like that's your show. That's amazing. We gotta talk. <laughs> it's the same people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it was just it was cool. And uh, yeah. Trevor, yeah, I appreciate you, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's a just super a cool... super nice guy. Yeah, we we met him at Podcast Movement um, this this past year. So yeah. we got to talk to him, and they have a really great team. So we met some of the salespeople there, and they're doing they're doing really well in, mm-hmm. in getting us a decent amount of ads. So I I definitely look into that. Any podcasters out there? Cool. Very cool. I, yeah. I want to get out to this next podcaster movement. I don't even know when it is, but I know we want to get we'll out. Away. I know there's been times it sort of overlapped with Traffic and Conversion Summit, and we've had issues, that, or it was too close to it. And, yeah. You know, having having wives and kids, it's a little hard to do back to back events and things like that. But I got another uh, question down that whole um, awareness phase or so. I know we talked about influencer marketing, uh, YouTube specifically. I don't know if you guys want to talk a little bit about that, but I thought that was kind of cool how you know if you can get someone to just mention your show once if they have a pretty rabid following on you know on their youtube channels it's it can completely blow up what you have going on in the podcast um so i know yep. that that was the case you don't have to name any names if you don't want to no, we were we were lucky enough to have um a couple very large youtube fashion bloggers mention us and we just saw a massive increase on that um it's not even really our niche that's the crazy thing but they just have the power because they get so many actual views on their videos and uh uh like their word goes a very long way so their testimonial is massive so when when they talk about oh i listened to this while putting on my makeup a bunch of people are like oh yeah i should try that too so that's that's been a really unique way to get more views and you guys came up with the idea of actually taking that testimonial was well, this was matt to mm-hmm. <laughs> actually uh, take that testimonial and then use that as an advertisement on their own channel so like if i have a fashion blogger who mentioned us well why not clip that out use like 30 seconds of it and then place that in front of her own videos on other videos like that she has to yeah. and advertise that way uh we just tr- started doing that like a couple of days ago um nice. but what's what's really hard is getting actual views on that specific channel so uh-huh. i i want to talk to you guys about that and whether it's here or offline about how to actually I- increase the odds of actually getting on that channel so we had to spread it across like multiple channels like her friends and stuff like that and increase the bid and do things like that but we still she has ads but we still can't for some reason get on her on her own channel but we get on like uh, most of her friends' channels 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know there's, there's some things you can do. It's obviously a deeper discussion, but, um, you know, one of the obvious things is you can always increase the bid if your stuff's not showing up on her channel. Mm -hmm. Uh, just, it most likely means that other people are just outbidding you on that channel. Um, Yeah. But that's, uh, yeah, that's what we figured. So I think we lifted up to because we were doing like five cents across the whole thing, and I lifted up her channel to fifty cents. Still got nothing, and hmm. so we're we're debating because like one view. Right, right now we've we've done about in a few days we're at uh, one point six thousand impressions, and that converts to six hundred eleven views, which is about a forty percent view rate, which also seems high to me. But it could be because it's this testimonial, like it's people are actually watching this ad because. It like it's it's a fashion blogger on a fashion like blog channel talking right at you, so it's it's might have like a higher uh, viewership yeah. on 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 those ads, but it's a really cool concept. So we're we're messing with that and might try it on Facebook too. Have you seen a spike in download numbers just since you've turned it on? Not yet. So oh, yeah. we'll yeah we're gonna be watching it though and check we we check our numbers weekly. I think you guys check daily. I thought that was that was kind of nuts. <laughs> yeah, it depends on what's happening on our on the podcast yeah i probably yeah. log in daily and look but yeah we're, we're obsessive <laughs> on certain numbers yeah um i don't spend too much time in there i'm just always curious yeah, <laughs> yeah. um i did have another question for lee about the actual writers you mentioned that you know we were talking about the, the quality of of writing are there uh, this might be kind of a tough question to answer but um are there any specific things you're you're looking for like yeah. What, what sort of determines a good writer versus one that's not sort of up to par? Do you have any criteria you're looking for? Uh, yeah, I, I do. Um, and it's not 100% of our posts because it's, it's literally impossible to find enough content that's exactly perfect. But I, I will tell you that the episodes that stick with me and stick with Justin are always very similar. Um, and, and the feedback we get from listeners, it, it's the ones that tell a story, right? Mm. So, you know, we do have a lot of content that's like, hey, do these five things to increase your productivity in the morning. And I think those are great, right? It's beneficial. It's actionable advice that's really great. But unless you're sitting down and writing those down and implementing them into your life, it's hard to remember those, you know, after a day or a week or a month. But the people that tell a story, um, and whether it's through their own personal experience or, some historical perspective. Like there's episodes that went off 500 episodes ago that I still remember, not quite word for word, but I remember exactly the emotion I felt when I read it and what the the moral of that story was. So um, people that can kind of convey a message of like what's important, but do it through like a storytelling lens uh, makes for like a really great audio experience. Because that's the other part of it too. It's this is audio versus reading. There's so Mm -hmm. much great content that I read and I'm just like, I'm, as I'm reading, I'm like, yeah, it just won't translate to audio. Like you yeah. need to see it. Um, yeah. And, 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 and I think that's, with, yep. I think that's like a big problem with the type of content that we produce. Cause a lot of our content is very case study tutorial mm-hmm. based. So it doesn't seem like it would translate super well into, yep. you know, a just readable in, thing. a readable audio thing. That's, that's kind of, yeah. Um, what have you guys done? Uh, obviously, YouTube is very readable mm. and video worthy. Um, have you pulled from there, or I guess you don't really have to? You have enough. It sounds like. Yeah, like we we do have enough uh, that it's yeah we we get so many submissions too that we're <laughs> we're always have this content and in Trello, like Lee has that like hundred blogs to that we still have to go through, but. Oh, man. Yeah, like to, to keep going with that, like it's if you have like can to give a emotional response, that's always going to do better than anything else. And and even in the business category, like an example might be uh, like Steve Chu of mywifequitterjob.com. Like mm-hmm. he, he does a good what he does, like there's lessons in there, but generally it is around a story of his own business or where they felt a lot of pain or happiness. So there's usually something there where it's like, something big happened and then here's a lesson from it and it won't be like the 10 tips it'll just be like this this one thing like this this way i thought about it or or we went down this route that that kind of stuff really sticks with you after time now does does he do interview style too the my wife quit my job or is his all just kind of storytelling each time on the blog, it is mostly storytelling from from what we've seen. Lee might know a little bit better, but yeah, he also does have a yeah, podcast. Have oh, so, sorry. I, I was yeah. thinking about the podcast. That's kind of what I've seen him as. I've never actually read his blog, <laughs> but I've, I've, I've oh, heard yeah, some of his podcast. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was I was kind of curious. Yep, his blog is like um, my girlfriend's an entrepreneur too, so she, she will mention his like frequently. Just be like, oh, I, I love what he when you read his because it <laughs> always has like a story about something. Um, so yeah, he he does have a it's a really good blog, and then he does have a podcast too. Yep. Yeah, no, I, I like that. I, I feel like the hardest podcasts in the world, the ones that are most likely to fade are the ones where they're not interviewing anybody yeah. and they're not curating content. It's just every single week or every single day or whatever their frequency is, they're trying to be the voice of the show and it's only them. I feel like those are the ones you tend to see fade out. They'll go like 10 episodes and then just stop doing it. Well, we tried that for a bit. <laughs> yeah. You know, it wasn't a full that, but yeah. I mean, you just run out of ideas and momentum. Yeah. So, yeah, it makes sense. Now, uh, let's see. Is there anything else yes. that we... Well, I know there's one topic we want to touch on that they probably don't know about yet. Probably a topic Justin doesn't want to touch on. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> you don't want to talk about your best buddy, Craig, in LA? <laughs> Dude, this is just all about doing something out of the ordinary because that's that's what happened. It's like I was, I was a well, fan of Craig. Let's... Yeah, it's a late, late show, basically, is what this Craig is all Ferguson. about. Craig yeah. Ferguson, yeah. Uh, who's the other guy that people get confused with? Oh. Craig Kilborn. Yeah, there's yes. Craig Kilborn. I was going to say Craig Kilborn, so I'm glad Joe wrote Craig Ferguson up on the the board here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. We just decided to wear Christmas sweaters one year because we watched the show so closely, and he was like, "Get up here! Like, you just got to think outside the box, do something different, and something cool happened from it." <laughs> so, yeah, like it, it just turned into a recurring thing because we we did something very unique. He saw it in the audience and was like you're going to come up here on television and we're just going to stick you up here. I'm going to make fun of you guys and pretend you're a couple. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and how many times? We, yeah. When he says we, it's not me and him. It was uh, yeah, him, yeah. a friend of his. Yeah. 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 So how many times did you actually end up getting featured on there? It must've been about 10 ish times. Like we, we went once and we're like, Oh my God, that was amazing. And they had to pay us. So that was what made it even better because like, I what? guess just, yeah, it's like by, by law, I guess if, if you're on television a certain amount of time, you just have to get the money. And it was like back then it might, I think it was like 200 bucks and as we were on television for five minutes. So I was like, <laughs> well, that was worth it. <laughs> so the next time we were like, Oh, what should we do? It's going to be random. It's not Christmas time. So Christmas sweaters don't make sense. And that so was the first one we did. And we're just like, oh, let's just wear Hawaiian shirts. <laughs> so this is like in the middle of March or April, like a couple months later, we show up, we're just both wearing ridiculous Hawaiian shirts. And, uh, He's he's like oh it's you guys again all right get up here and then he just made us out to be like stoners I mean he's just like that's what that was the theme of that episode so they had they paid us again and then I slowly like we had we had to keep signing this stuff like in the back like every time we went and so I developed like a relationship with the production manager there got her business card and I was like, yeah, I'll just let you know if we're coming again. And she's like, oh, okay, cool. So it turned into like, Hey, we're coming. You know, like, <laughs> I started like, but there every you week. know, like be, yeah, be prepared because we're coming. And so we just get like a little more elaborate with our, what we're dressing up as like, we, we were both Mario for some reason one year. I think that was mm-hmm. Halloween. Um, yeah. Suit and tie. Cause nobody like in these audiences, like everyone's just like in a t-shirt. So <laughs> we would just do whatever it gets like attention and, and he'd bring us up every time. That's uh, that's an amazing way to uh, basically offset starting a business too, because <laughs> <laughs> making two hundred bucks a year off of it. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like that was a, a good little. I mean, I don't know when you ended going there because I know he's not on air anymore. I don't think he is. But, no, uh, no, yeah, they they should. That's the one thing we regret is we didn't go like the last year. We were kind of over it at that point. Uh, yeah. Not the show, but just just kind of like we'd done it so many times. And we're like, ah, we're running out of ideas, and then like he announced that year he was done. We're like, Oh, we should have just gone through the end. <laughs> like we would have made it to the end. But yeah, there is like, to me, it's like business lessons of just like standing out. Like if you do something unique that and that's the same thing with our podcast, like idea was so out there and original that it's, somebody's going to notice somebody will see it and they'll appreciate it. If you can make them smile too, that's a bonus. That's going to mm-hmm. give you even better odds. But yeah, it's like that. That's kind of how I try to run my life of like just standing out in different ways that, you might get negative. Like some people might just think you're weird or whatever, but like if you're doing something unique, you're, you'll get there. Some, somebody's going to appreciate it generally. <laughs> well, it, it's funny because like introverts like us, that's kind of like the opposite of what you would expect. Right, <laughs> I was going to mention right. that. Like, it's just really interesting that, and I mean, 
not to call it out, but like you're doing a lot of the talking here too. You know? and, uh, <laughs> yes, it's it's well, I, I give you guys a lot of credit because I, but like if you're checking my my uh, pulse right now, it's probably like 180 or something like that. <laughs> so especially when I know it's coming, like when you are like, well, we don't want to go. We're not sure if we should go down this path. My my pulse rate just spikes, so it's like, and I'm Sorry, like on the verge of collapse, like of it well, of a panic attack. It's funny I, because <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anytime yeah. we go to like any sort of like live performance, and my wife would attest to this that like. If we're going to like a live show where at some point they pull people up onto the stage, <laughs> it's always me. Like a hundred percent of the time. <laughs> if we go to a show and they're like, we need a, somebody from the audience and they're just kind of like picking at random. 100% of the time that's happened, it's been me. It's got to be the beard. And I think it's the fact that I'm a six, thr- six all, foot yeah. three dude with a giant beard. Like, <laughs> And I don't normally wear like drab colors. I'm usually wearing something like bright and colorful. Mm. And so I think like I tend to stand out just by accident. But like every time it. we go somewhere, like a lot of my wife, she'll always be like, oh, they're picking somebody from the audience. Are you ready? Like, because we just know it's always freaking me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think for me, like, like doing that kind of stuff is almost like a way to cope or deal with it. Like if I do something so outlandish, it's almost like I'm putting on a mask or like a. Yeah. it's like I get to be somebody different. Then it, yeah. it kind of takes me out of my discomfort. So like right now it's it's a little more who I am like as a person or raw and that, that leads to like anxiety and and panic. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like, like when you started asking that question, I did, like I, I got, actually really nervous and I, I even threw it back to Craig Kilborn because I needed like a little pause there just to like take a breath gather myself. Yeah. So it's yeah. like stuff like that is actually, uh, yeah, it affects me pretty bad. And you might be able, not be able to tell on the phone, but no, it's, uh, yeah, I, I wish I had like an Apple Watch going right now or a, a, a wristwatch going. That checks my blood because I'd love to see how high it was. It was probably really, really high, like up to getting into the 200 range. <laughs> it's like part of me feels bad, but at the same time, I love how yeah. open you are. Like most people won't even have the balls to say what you're saying there, let alone even come on the podcast either. I mean, like you've done. And I love the analogy. Like it's it's really what you did on TV with Craig Ferguson. Like the fact that you're in front of millions of people or however many watch. Like that's ridiculous. So props to you. I appreciate <laughs> that. that. I, yeah, I saw I saw Matt kind of had a similar thing that he shared too. Which uh, that's that's again why I relate to mm-hmm. you guys is that yeah the more the more you put out there like that kind of stuff it's like uh, you never know who's going to relate to it. So it's good to for sure good to put it out there. We'll well, go, yeah. uh, luckily, you live in California, so maybe we'll send you a package or something. <laughs> That'll calm you down. <laughs> I mean, everybody who watches Craig Ferguson already thinks he does it anyway. <laughs> yeah. No, um, <laughs> no. For I mean, for me, I, I I battle with anxiety quite a bit. In fact, starting podcasting originally, when I first started my podcast in 2010, the original reason I started it was like to get out of my comfort zone because I was actually terrified of interviewing people. Like it scared the crap out of me. Like if you listen to some of my old episodes from 2010, which aren't online anymore, but <laughs> maybe they'll resurface someday. Um, like I sound terrified. Like you could probably hear shivering in my voice because I was mm. so nervous when talking to people. And it was just through repetition of just interviewing people over and over and over again. And even to this day, if we're going to interview somebody that I feel is sort of like a bigger name that I've kind of put on a pedestal over the years, I get mm. really anxious about it. You know, when we had David Allen on, I was mm. actually really nervous to interview him because I read his book 15 years ago. And, you know, he, he, the the type of stuff that he teaches has impacted so many people that I still get anxious interviewing a lot of people. And um, obviously, you know. Lee and I don't ever get anxious. No, <laughs> they're, just, they're just always cool as cucumbers. We're just robots. Uh, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but no, we get it. I, I I have my own anxiousness things around the podcast, and obviously life. But and when we no, go to yeah. events now, I'm like I'm the guy that would probably rather be on stage than out in the crowd because it's true. It's true. <laughs> I'm more comfortable being on the stage presenting to people than I am in small group communication, small group discussions. Mm. So <laughs> how trippy is that? Yeah. Well, uh, we've gone on for a while now. Oh, uh, anything Lee that you want to say on your side about being anxious or anything? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know what's funny is, uh, you know, I think it's really good that Justin does talk about it. I know when he first started the show, he talked a, a lot about it on each of the episodes, um, and it's amazing how much correspondence that we do get from from listeners on that. Um, and, and it's funny because you know Justin and I were friends for many years, and he had never mentioned to anything to me about like you know having anxiety, um, and I would have never been able to tell. I would have never been able to tell he was like you know, introverted and got, <laughs> got tired from being around big groups all the time. Um, 
so it, it, cool. it's one of those things where it, it's cool as you get to learn somebody and, you know, become closer with them. But I think it's been so good that he's been able to share that. Um, because yeah. I think it has impacted like a lot of our listeners, you know, yeah. a lot of people, they don't, when they're in a public face, they don't want to show like any issues that they may be having or any struggles that they're dealing with. And a lot of times when you share that stuff, like that's the most powerful thing that people are going to remember about you. And a hundred percent, just sharing it too helps actually relieve some of the anxiety I've noticed. Hell yeah. yeah. You're not covering <laughs> yeah. anything up. You're like, well, <laughs> I'm just out here yeah, in the my, open now. <laughs> my my heart rate slowed down a little bit, but it's it's crazy because uh, he like that Lee didn't realize it. So like when I said it, I thought it like he figured it out at that point. But I, I can see like how you can't really tell on the outside unless you have a full blown like panic attack, yeah. which I did have like in a presentation that he was in. So the fact that I didn't even remember it just makes <laughs> wow. me happy because like to, to know that he doesn't even like, like recall it. It's like to me, it's like such an embarrassing moment that it's like I it, like everybody remembers it you know you have that like feeling of like oh yeah it's, it's it, like replays in your head over and over again it just like reinforces this this bad you know mentality but like everyone else they have their own lives they don't care they should not yeah. gonna go That's back true. to that point in time unless like someone brings it up like which is likely not gonna happen yeah i mean that's that's the big key to remember at least for me is everybody else has their own shit going on in their head and you know, we're all trying our best. Yeah. <laughs> everybody's important. got their own stuff going on in their head. And so like when I'm embarrassed by something, the likelihood that other people are still thinking about the thing I was embarrassed by 15 minutes later is fairly low because everybody's got their own stuff going on in their head. Right. It's like so yep, for me, we were at this event just to kind of close that loop on what you were mentioning. Joe and I were actually at an event a few weeks ago and we'd been at this event all day long, straight networking, got there at like 8 AM and we went to this party thing and it was like, the party didn't start till like 9 p.m. So it was just a really, really long day of just networking and talking and just wearing on me and wearing on me and wearing on me. And then we were at this this event and I and I just started to get real tired and I went to walk away and I just collapsed in the middle of like this party with 50, 60 people at it. And that was like insanely embarrassing. And then we actually went and had lunch with the two dudes who put on the event like three days later. And I don't even think they knew it happened. They didn't even bring it up. <laughs> and we're actually interviewing one of the guys today. Yeah. <laughs> later on. But uh, no, it's just, yeah, we all got our own thing going on. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's just give ourselves a break and just do what we're good at. Keep challenging ourselves and just keep going. So uh, props to you guys. And let's wrap this up because I know we've got a little long. So appreciate you guys. Um, we always like to ask, you know, if there's any book or something you like to read or maybe reference often that you'd like to share here. <laughs> yeah, uh, since I've listened to like every episode, I, I, I knew that was coming. It's <laughs> it's tough because uh, we we read so many blogs. I'm reading so many that I don't read anymore. What are your favorite pick. blogs? Share yeah, some of those. Yeah, that yeah. works too. Um, so on the minimalist side, probably like becoming minimalist as Joshua Becker and the minimalists themselves. I, I end up narrating their audiobooks because they, they wow. enjoyed the podcast. So actually that would be a good <laughs> mention if you're into minimalism, like the minimalist books or audiobooks, you could hear my voice on the audiobooks. But nice. um yeah, the there's just so like I can't it's hard to pick like from our selection like our favorites because we we pick them for a reason that they're all great in different ways. So I don't like to hand pick but so the I answer is say, just uh, go listen to the O L D podcast yeah, and exactly. you'll hear all of your favorite blogs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, but like yeah. I, I know how to win friends and influence people like in, that that had an impact on me. Again, the audiobook though, I thought they did a really great job with it. Like the narrator's uh really good. So if I had to pick a book book, I, I might go go that route. That's cool. yeah, that's cool. I've never heard the audiobook. What about version. you, Lee? Are you a big reader? Uh, less so in the past couple of years as I've transitioned. You know, I listen to a, a crazy amount of podcasts, and I'm now moving over into audiobooks. So I still have like a library shelf full of books that I'm trying to get through, so I can fully convert to an audiobook listener. <laughs> um, but but there is one book that kind of stands out. It's funny, Justin. I don't think he remembers this book, but. Uh, we both took this class together at Pepper and it was a really impactful class. And it was, it was all about, um, you know, kind of like your life and what you want to do with it in terms of like, you know, not only work, but health and, you know, kind of what you're leaving behind. Um, and one of the books that we read in that class was called, uh, uh, your life is your message. And mm. I'm probably going to butcher his name, but his, <laughs> the author's name is Eknath. Uh, Asmarin. Uh, yeah, so it, we'll link it, it up in the show notes. Yeah, <laughs> but it's a, it's an amazing book. I've probably read it like four or five times, and I'm wow. not somebody who likes to reread books. Um, 
but it's one of those books where you can probably read it in a couple days, uh, you know, just before bed. And uh, it's just a really powerful book. And it, it talks about, you know, compassion for other people and, you know, what your daily actions and kind of like the life you lead, like how that's really like what you're putting out there to the world and what you're going to leave when you're gone. So uh, it's just a good, it. good reminder. You know, it's one of those things like when we transitioned from mobile apps, which we had no passion for, we didn't really feel like it was del- delivering any value to anybody uh, over into this space where we're now getting, you know, dozens of emails every day or every other day from people that are saying, Hey, your podcast really changed my life. And even though we don't, we're not the writers of all this amazing content, we're still like the medium that's helping getting it out there to more and more people. So it's, it's really powerful. I love it, man. That's amazing. And, uh, Justin, you know, the, the last question here that I'm going to ask <laughs> where, where you, you want people to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, our website's Old Podcast. OLD stands for Optimal Living Daily, but also works really well. That's oldpodcast.com. And uh, any of our shows, like if you're into audiobooks and you like reading blogs but don't have time, any of the shows would be great. You can search for Optimal Living Daily because we have a network. They, they will all pop right up. Love it. Cool. Uh, dude, uh, yeah, this is why we call you the old guys. At least we're not there. <laughs> like old guys, we're going to talk to them. Yeah, we're, not, we're not that old. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. All like the also, same if age. you guys want to search Craig Ferguson sweater guys in YouTube, the uh, <laughs> result will be the the parody of all the visits of Justin. We brother. can actually have our, our, our uh, show notes guy link that up in the show notes too. <laughs> so thank you. We're going to embed it. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Uh, maybe we should take uh, <laughs> Justin's pulse. Again. No, no. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Hey, cool, he man. shared it on Facebook, so he doesn't exactly. seem to mind people f- seeing it. <laughs> yeah. I love it. No, I did watch it the other night. I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. <laughs> oh, man, I was, I was busting up. I like the little soul patch, too. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, you, yeah I, have, I have many different facial beard things going <laughs> I, on in, in that, that series. I, I was in that soul patch phase for a day. <laughs> <laughs> no, my, my best phase was the Fu Manchu mustache, which I, I, you had one too. I remember that he, he too. You had one, yeah. Yep, you yeah. had a Fu Manchu in one of those too. Yeah, it's like a more handlebar style. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah it's true. very thick. <laughs> All right, guys. I know we can keep going forever, but we're going to turn it off. We'll do a round two later. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, guys. All right, guys. Appreciate you. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yep, thanks. All right. Thank you. And I hope you just enjoyed this episode you just listened to. Now, right now, before we sign off, I have a few things I would love for you to do. So the very first thing is to go find our guests on Facebook and tell them that you loved their episode with us. That's going to help them uh, just feel good about themselves, but also uh, it's going to spread the word a little bit more for us. So go find them on Facebook. Everybody's on Facebook and go say that you love their episode and maybe one cool thing that you learned there. The second thing is to go to iTunes and subscribe to our podcast. Just look up Hustle and Flow Chart and hit the subscribe button. And the very last thing, the third thing is to leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you're listening to this podcast and help us spread the word more. That's how more people are going to get uh, this awesome knowledge, this, this cool podcast training and a whole bunch of other cool free training that we give out at evergreenprofits.com. So that's about it. Go find them on Facebook, go subscribe on iTunes and leave us a review. You would be amazing if you did that, but you're always amazing. So thanks for listening and we'll catch you in the next episode.